Hello my friends, in the last episode we edited this photo and in today's episode we will transform it into a black and white image. And the first thing I would like to do is duplicate this layer, so I'll go Command J to duplicate it. Now, if you want to transform an image into a black and white image, the best way to do it is by using an adjustment layer and you'll just go to black and white. Now, here you have all these controls that you can adjust the luminosity of each of these colors into your black and white image. So if I increase the reds, you see the reds that are over here onto this foliage, you will get brightened so I can darken it or brighten it. I'm going to brighten it just to create some separation. And I'll do the same with the yellows. I don't want to go too far though, just a little bit. You can see if you bring the blues down, you can darken the sky a little bit more. So I'll just go to something like that, not too much. Now I want to darken the sky even a little bit more, so I will create another adjustment layers and I'll just go to curves and I'll take the exposure down. But I don't want this to affect my whole image, I just want to affect the sky. So onto the mask over here, I will go to my gradient here on the left, click on the gradient. And then over here I will have the first one, which this is the foreground to background. So I'll click OK and I have white and black, well, um, white as a foreground, black as a background. So now I will just drag this gradient over here and that creates a gradient mask. And now we are just darkening the sky, as you can see. Maybe my gradient is a little bit too low, so I'm just going to drag it again, something like that, that looks better. This is the before, this is the after. So now that we've done all of this, I want to take this image into the Nick collection. So to do so, first I would like to make a stamp layer. For that, I will go Command, Option, Shift, and E. And this will take a picture. It makes a stamp layer of everything that we've done underneath. So now with this layer, I will go to Filter. I will go to Nick Collection and Skylar FX Pro 3. If you've never heard of uh, Nick Collection, they have some wonderful, wonderful extensions. And this one is particularly good for black and white images. As you can see, when you open the image, it automatically applies a preset. This is the neutral preset. And all the presets are over here on the left side. This is neutral. We have underexposed, overexposed, um, high contrast, and it's just so many of them over here. There are some of them that are so beautiful and some that they are, you know, an acquired taste, but there are a lot of them to choose from. As you can see, I am scrolling through them and this one is kind of neat actually, very bright but neat. And I think I have one that I like more on the bottom. This is a little bit flat and gray. This is like antique plate. That's kind of neat too. This is called uh, highlight fade. That was kind of neat. And there are just so many to choose from. Let's see which one will work good as a starting point for our image. And the two that I am inclined towards is this hint of blue, just because it's a little bit different. It's not very black and white, has a little bit of blue, or just this neutral that we started with. And I think just because we want to do something different, we will go with the hint of blue. So this is our starting point. We have a preset, but now we can still, you know, change it over here on the right where we have all of our controls. So you see, we can make it brighter, we can make it darker. We have all these controls. If you want to reset a control point, just double click on it and we'll reset it to zero. So let's say if we want to bring the highlights down maybe a little bit, maybe we want to increase the midtones. Uh, two of my favorite sliders into Nick FX is the soft contrast and dynamic brightness. And I like to bring those a little bit to the left. So soft contrast, if I move it to the left, it just kind of opens up the image a little bit. And then dynamic brightness, I will just darken it a little bit, something like that. And I feel like that is just a notch, nice touch. Now you have all kinds of controls here. But the one thing that the you know, Nick FX is uh, known for is their control points. And you can see here it says control points and we have this little point. If I click on it, I can go click anywhere on my image and that creates a control point. Now this bar that is on the right side, I can make the control point bigger or smaller. So let's say I want to make it this big. What does that mean? 
well that means i have a mask in here now so i can have all these controls now to change whatever setting is in within this mask if i want to see my mask i can go over here where it says control point one and click on the mask and now we're seeing this is what is being affected with my control point so as you can see the program is looking around and try to pick the same tones or colors if you're working with color images and you see like if i just want to alter the trees i could go here and put a small control point and just work with the trees or you know if you're working with the clouds or whatever but for this image i will just put it on these spears and let's see i need to make it a little bit bigger something like that and what i want to do to this pier is to add a little bit of structure i'm going to go back to the mask to disable this so we can see the image and now i will just add some structure to that pier just to you know make it stand out a little bit you see, you can add a lot of structure and that's a little bit too much for me. But just like that, I will just add about that much structure to this one. Now, if I want to duplicate this control point so you can add to the rest of the peers, an easy way to do that is just hold down option and then drag it and move it in a different place. And now it duplicated the same exact control point. And you can see now on this control point list, we have two of them. I can take this one, hold down option and put one over here. And now we have three of them. If you want to see the mask for all three of them combined, you can go over here to the top and just click on that. And now we are seeing everything that is being affected. So I am going to disable that for now so we can see our image. And now we added structure to these three peers over here. And that is good because I want my uh, viewer's eye to go here in the middle so i feel like that is a good touch now that i am done adding my controls and i added some structure if you want you can add more controls and make the clouds more you know dynamic for example i can take a control point and put it in the brighter parts and go to the brightness and maybe make the brighter parts a little bit brighter just to create a little bit more uh, contrast and then i can hold down option and move this point and duplicate this to these other brighter parts and then you can do the same thing and make the darker parts of the clouds darker by adding control points and darkening those but for now i feel like this is just enough for this image when you are done with your image if you want to compare you can use these uh, toggles here on the top this is holding down this is what we started with when we brought it from photoshop and this is what we ended up right now you can also have this sliding uh, bar that you can just drag so this is the before this is the after before and after or you can have them you know side by side like that so we'll go back to the full view and when we are done and we wanted to send it back into photoshop all we need to do is click apply over here and now it is applying back into photoshop it takes a little uh, few seconds for it to load and now because we applied this on a whole new layer we can of course work with the opacity if we don't want this effect to be that strong and we can just add a little bit of it or the whole 100 percent whatever you want you can do it because it is on its own layer you can add a layer mask and you can mask out some parts if you don't want it to show but i just wanted to quickly show you the power of uh, the nick collection silver effects pro and uh, that is pretty much it for today i i do like the result i do like this bluish tint onto the black and white image to flatten the image, you right click on the layer and go to flatten image and this is our final image. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kyla Ewing. I'll see you in my next video.